Thank God it's Sunday once again. Amen. Amen. So we also uh, just remain on your seat and let us pray. Our loving Lord, once again, thank you for the gathering us, Lord, to worship you today, to fellowship with your word. I pray, Lord, that you will be the one to help us, Lord, to have this understanding, to receive the blessings from your word this morning. I pray that you will prepare our minds and hearts. And I pray as well, Lord, that you will please give me the wisdom, the knowledge, Father, to share your word to your people, to your children. May the words that come from my mouth, Lord, will be guided by the Holy Spirit. I cannot do this, Father, without your wisdom and your grace. So please help me. This is all as in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your Bibles, please, in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8. But we're be, we'll be studying uh, the book of Genesis chapter 19. But we will read this one first. Okay? Are you there, Bo? Shall we read it all together? Second Peter chapter 2, verse number 7 and 8. Amen? Amen. Uh, wala pa iba. Katabi lang yun ng Matthew. Amen. Amen. Now, let us read it all together. Please begin. And deliver just lot, vexed, vexed or uh, simply means uh, tortured, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now we'll be studying about the message entitled When Compromise Becomes a Routine. But let's turn your Bibles first in the book of Genesis chapter 18. Let's start our study here first. Now, in Genesis chapter 18, we can see here in chapter 18 verse number 1, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, <clears throat> there are three men stood by him, and when he saw th them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the, the ground. Now, in the, uh, in the uh, ancient uh, customs and traditions, most of the leaders of the family usually uh, uh, stay, uh, especially uh, when they're having their dinner, they usually stay at the front door of their tent. Now, what is the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to uh, welcome any visitor who will be approaching or passing by along the way. And their custom during those days is that they need to really invite, okay, and try to persuade any visitors who will pass by to join them with their what's called uh, meal during those days. And then the Bible tells us here that uh, it says here, that three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them. Now, it is actually the Lord appeared unto him. Now, this happened uh, later uh, in a short time, because uh, we can see here also in Genesis chapter 17, verse 21, please. It says here, But my covenant will establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time, and the next year, if you remember during our study last time, that the Lord appeared unto Abraham to confirm uh, the, his promise to give them a son, which is Isaac. Then we can see here as well that God said Sarah would what give birth one year later on. And at this time, if you can see here that Sarah is not yet pregnant. So this could not be more than just uh, three months after these events. Now, then the Lord appeared unto him. Now we can see here that this presentation here, we can see of the Lord Jesus Christ in the human form. It is before his what they call pre-incarnation, 
before he was born in Bethlehem. Now we can also see here that uh, when the Bible tells us, we can assume here that in John 1 18, it says here that who only hath immortality dwelling in light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen God or nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Now we can see here that it was the Lord Jesus Christ himself who appeared unto Abraham. Amen. Now, it is very important here because uh, I don't know how uh, Abraham recognized the Lord, uh, the angel of the Lord or the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It is because prior to that, the Lord already appeared unto him. Amen. Confirming that promise. So I don't know if uh, it was the same face uh, of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ when he appeared unto uh, Abraham prior to that. But the Bible tells us that Abraham recognized them right away. And what happened is that he ran and welcomed those visitors. Amen. He ran. Now according to his godliness during that time, this is one of the mode of what called salutation that they really have that what they call hospitality when it comes to uh, strangers or visitors during those days. Now compared to uh, what we, we are doing right now in the present, it's very, very far. Am I right? Para sa atin eh, tagal naman umalis ng bisita nito, nakakabuisit na. But during those days, no. They're not doing that. God reaffirms His promise in verse number 9 and 10. Let's read here. And, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind them. Amen. This is very important, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we need to hear God's promises from time to time, over and over again. Do you believe in that? <coughs> Amen? Because it is God's way in order for, for us to be uh, encouraged and also to develop, uh, develop our faith in Him. When the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I believe that Abraham and Sarah during those days, they, they were a bit discouraged. They've been waiting for that promise. It's been a long time that they've been longing for a son to be in their family. Of course, this is one of our problems most of the time. We're already at the edge of that promise of the Lord and then we suddenly stop. And it is because of our doubts. That is prevailing again in us. But praise the Lord that God's grace, wisdom, and knowledge prevails everything. Amen. Hello. Nothing is impossible with God. And what happened here when Sarah heard what the Lord told to Abraham? Actually, she laughed within herself. And try to notice here, I'm going to read it. it you will continue to read that. You will notice that who is this uh, uh, stranger that can, uh, uh, I mean, we're able to guess the name of Sarah. And we're able to uh, discern the heart of Sarah after hearing those words. Now we can see here that it is really the what? The Lord Himself who appeared unto what? Abraham. Because this is one of the attributes of God. Amen? Being what they call omniscient. Amen? He knows everything in us. Amen. The same thing inside the church. You, you might say that uh, my intention is actually right with God, but hey, God knows your heart. 
And you cannot deny and cannot make even this what he called a deceitfulness within you. Because God knows everything. Of course, she laughed because she had passed that what you call age of childbearing. Amen? And she has stopped menstruating and had gone through that what you call menopause. Who among you here have experienced uh, being, uh, this what you call menopause? You are mukhang like menopause lang, pero wala pa siguro. Amen? <laughs> so Sarah what? She laughed But to her surprise The Lord said Why did Sarah laugh? Please take note There's nothing hidden Before the Lord There was nothing we might live very differently if we remember that God hears and knows everything we think or say. But God said, let's continue here, verse 15. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she, uh, for she, is, she was afraid. And she said, nay, but thou, what, didst laugh? But in verse 14, we're going to take a look here. Is anything too hard for the Lord? And that is a great encouragement, amen? amen. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of what? Life. We might think that God will say, okay, because uh, that's it, because you laughed. I can take it to somebody who is deserving, who will appreciate it. But again here, instead, God responded by dealing with her sin of unbelief, by not taking away the promise. Amen? You know, this is the good thing for our Lord. Amen? Even in the midst of what they call unbelief and doubt, but still the promise of the Lord will always be there for us. Amen. We might be going into a different course of life in a course of time, but His promises will always be real and true to every one of us. But if we are faithless, hey, the Lord still remains being faithful to us. Second Timothy uh, chapter 2 verse 13, please. We're not yet there in our lesson. Amen. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot what? Deny himself. Amen. Significantly here, the Lord said to Abraham, and again, God dealt with Abraham about this. Because as we all know, Abraham was the head of the family, and not actually dealing with Sarah. But again, praise the Lord, because of his, what he called faithfulness. And here we go now, on chapter 8 and verse number 16 to 19. Now, and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Now this is their culture during those days. Now, as the host, inviting those visitors, I need to prepare a meal for them while standing by, waiting for them to be finished. And that's their custom during those days. And then... When my visitors will be done, or I mean finished uh, eating, I need to uh, bring them and send them away going into their, what you call, journey. And that's their culture during those days. Pero ngayon eh, ano ba ngayon? 
Ano, pag ayaw na tayong bisita eh. Di na naman inahatid, di ba? Inahatid pa ba natin pa uwi? O maghatiran na lang tayo hanggang di tayo makauwi. But they've been doing that during those days. So what happened here? And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Abraham, being hospitable and host in that day, Abraham accompanied, as what I've said to you a while ago, their guests on their journey for a while as they depart. And because of what God would bring to Abraham, and because Abraham had a great uh, had to be a great leader. What happened here is that God revealed to him his plan. Amen? As we know, Abraham was a what? Friend of God. God wanted to do something in Abraham's life through what he will reveal to him. Then what happened here? God reveals that he will be what? Destroying and he will be punishing the people in Sodom. Now we've heard uh, what Brother John uh, shared to us before, right? The Bible really did not uh, specifically uh, give that uh, uh, reason why Sodom and Gomorrah was uh, punished by God. But we can see here later on, these this are one of the reasons. No, we can see. Now look at that. And the man what? Verse 22. And the man turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now we see the two men are actually the angels. Amen. Who visited Sodom. You can see that in Genesis chapter 19, 1 to 38 later on. And the third man in that party is actually the Lord himself. The Lord. Then Abraham came here to the Lord and talked to God. Now, please take, take an note on this. Effective intercession is better in order for us to draw closer to God. Do you believe in that? Amen? To enjoy the goodness and the heart of God. We have to what? Come near, closer to Him. If we are in need, we have to get closer to our God and pour our what? Prayers and everything that we need. And we need to ask everything for the Lord. Because, but this is most of, our, uh, most of the time, this is our mistake. We generalize everything. But the Bible tells us it's very effective if we are going to what? Give a specific what? Prayer to our God. He said here, Would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? In discussing this kind of question, we can see here that Abraham thought that God, as a righteous God, could not punish the, ends, the what you call innocent in the same way with the guilty. Take note, God is a just. He is just. Take note on that. Prayer is effective because it prays knowing who God is. We pray because we depend that, that God can do something about this prayer for us. And it works always in that what they call particular situation. God is always that way. Hey. So be faithful to Him. Start here. Abraham now is a very good negotiator. Amen said, Lord, perhaps if there are 50 people living in that place, are you going to destroy them? God said, if I can see 
50 people living there, of course I have to spare their lives. Another thing here, Lord, how about 45? So the same thing. If I will see 45 people living in that place, I will spare their lives. Oh Lord, I will ask you once again, and don't get mad at me, Abraham said. How about 40? If I will see 40 people living in that place, the same thing, I'm going to spare their lives. Lord, another thing. How about 20? So the same thing, the answer of the Lord. I will spare their lives. Lord, how about 10? You know, Abraham could simply say, Lord, please save Lot and his family there in Sodom. But Abraham is not selfish. Amen. He had that concern for those people living in that place. But actually, not even 10 were saved in Sodom. Amen? He's a good negotiator. But remember this. The negotiation of Abraham became fruitful. Amen? Hey. This eyes on me. Nothing is impossible with God. Please try to remove those doubts within your hearts and replace it with faith to our Lord. Now here we go in our lesson in Genesis chapter 19. Sir Lily, pakibigay yung phone ko. Baka um, abuti lang alas 12 dito. Pangit na yung tingin ng iba eh. Now, thank you, Brother Seth. So when compromise becomes a what? Routine. How many of us Christians today have been doing this? Compromise. Now the same thing in Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom and even at even or in the evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. Here, pictures us that Lot was a civic leader or a judge in Sodom during those days. Now, the problem here is that there is what they call a progression of compromise that happened in the life of Lot. First, take a look here in Genesis 13 verse 10. It says here in Genesis chapter 13 verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. What happened here first is was that he what? He went from what? Looking toward Sodom. But what happened here? A progression of what they call uh Compromise. After that, to pitching his tent towards Sodom in Genesis 13 12. It, it says here, 13 12, please. A loading. Okay, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 12, Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan and what? Lot. What happened here? Dwelt in the cities of the plain and what? Pitch. His tent toward Sodom. Progression. And another thing here. 
the tragic and one of the saddest thing that happened in the life of Lot, he was living to uh, inside or living in Sodom. In Genesis 14, 12, it says here, And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. You know that? You may have noticed that every day of your life, you are uh, being uh, what you call comprom uh, being compromised is now what you call progressing in your life. You may not notice it. You are not careful that later on in your life you've been dragged away up from the presence of the Lord. We have to be very careful, brothers and sisters, in the Lord. You may not notice it without the guidance of the Holy Spirit and then our manual, which is the Word of God. Hey, now Lot sees in the gate of Sodom. What happened here? But the Bible tells us in 2 Peter, the text that we read a while ago, 2 Peter chapter 7, 2 verses number 7 and 8, and deliver just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their what unlawful deeds Lot has been observing these events every day hey but because of compromise everything is okay for him So sad, amen. Knowing that a person knows the truth, but goes on and plunged into this what called compromise. It's so sad. And the Bible tells us here, let's continue here, in verse 3. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and made them a feast, and did bake and leaven bread, and they did eat. The angel said, Okay, we will just stay in the street and pass the whole night. But Lot said, He urged them. To go with him. Maybe on his mind. He knew what will happen to them. If they will stay on the streets. Amen. Amen. People of Sodom are very wicked. And he knows what will happen to them. He insisted strongly. The hospitality offered to the visitors was not unusual. But urgency with what Lot has offered to them. Point number one. When compromise becomes a routine, number one, you will lose your what they call influence. Hey. We are the soul of the earth. God wants us to be a good example for those people around us. Hey. Now, what happened here? In verse number 4 to 9. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even men of Sodom, compassed or surrounded the house. Both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. It is an act of what they call uh, homosexuality. The act of that is a very uh, disgusting in the eyes of God. Now, 
And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray in verse 7, brethren, look at that, brethren. He called those wicked men as what? Brethren. Can you even uh, take a, have that what you call guts of accepting these people as brethren, knowing that they are not doing right in the eyes of God? Hey, that is compromise. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Unto, un, uh, only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my what? Roof. Can you imagine the thinking of Lot? He offered his two daughters to these wicked men and said, you can do everything you want to them to satisfy your needs. Hey! Because they've been doing uh, this as a routine. It's so sad. Take a look here. And verse, in verse 9. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn, and he will need to be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Look at that. He was a leader in the community in that place, but People disrespected him. His influence right now has been lost. How about us? In our community, can we say that we have influence in those people around us? Do you think we can say that we can do something for these people in order for these people to be saved? Hey. Eh? Or we will just say, eh? Lot thought that having this what they call body body approach can lead these people into the saving knowledge of the Lord. But hey, it's not. But it is in the opposite way. He loses influence. It is very sad, amen? Amen. I'm very sad here looking at your faces. Some of you are very sleepy. Bring them out unto us. These citizens of Solomon clearly came to what? Homosexuality and a very disgusting, abusive type of action. That we may know them. Now, Bajo uh, knows this well because this is one of his uh, thesis, I think, right? But homosexuality is not actually mentioned there, right? The reason why Sodom was punished by God. But hey, we can see here also that there is no doubt the Bible declares homosexual conduct is what they call sin look at that in Romans 1 26 to 28 let's take a look here for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even the women did change the natural use of what into that which is against nature 27 please and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, look at that. 
They don't want to retain God under knowledge. God gave them over to a what? Reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That's what happened here. And we know that this kind of sin is very rampant nowadays. Amen? We can see them everywhere. <laughs> and they've been exposing themselves right now and says that they're very proud of who they are. Hey! No. They said, no. I'm a girl trapped in a body of a man. Which is not right. Amen? It's so sad. But people are accepting them. Saying that it's alright. And if you will say something bad against them, they will say that, oh! Racist. Tama ba? Mali, di ba? Mali yung term. Sabi ko na sa inyo, anong term yun? Huh? Homophobic. Thank you for correction. Limited lang yung English ko. That's so sad, amen? <laughs> Imagine. A man with a body built of a uh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger then walking this way. <laughs> oh! Yaks. Hey Amen. And with the muscle of a uh, Popeye the sailor man. You know Popeye? Amen. <laughs> so that's what happened. Laws of what they call influence. Homosexuals also have an interest of defining themselves as what they call gay. A word that is used to mean as what they call happy or carefree. Carefree? They're free <laughs> of what they're doing. But it's so sad. But it is a poor, what they call, description of a lifestyle that has a what they call high rate of death, suicide, and even a what they call disease. It's all sad, amen? Laws of influence. So please, be aware and be careful not to, lo not to lose your influence to the lost people around us we must shine amen shine <laughs> kaya um, nagagamit din ito eh may purpose din yan amen I miss those days yung kumpleto pa yung buhok mo point number two I told you we're not going to stay long amen and compromise becomes a what you call routine. Verse 12, chapter 19, verse 12. And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son in law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. And that is the warning of God. For we will destroy this place because we cry, the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to what? Destroy it. But the funny thing is this. I'm not actually funny, but the saddest thing is this. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters and said up get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy the city but he seemed as one that mock unto his sons look at that 
The angel said, Please tell your family that we will be destroying this place and you have to leave this place as soon as possible. So Lot went to his sons in law, telling them, Hey, the Lord will destroy this place. Let us leave and go to another place. But what happened here? But he seemed as one that what? Mocked unto his sons in law. Point number two laws of testimony. Amen. Maybe one of his sons in law sons in law will say, What? We will leave this place. We've seen you doing everything what we're doing here in this place, and they will say, We will leave. What? <laughs> Amen. Hey. Or what? It's so sad. Because that is what they call compromise. You will say, hey, please listen to me. I'm a Christian. Really? You look like one of us. Look at your hair. Look at the way you uh, wear your clothes. Look at that. It's very... Wow. Laws of testimony. Nobody believe him that he's been telling the truth. When it is the right time... For these people to hear the facts. They don't believe him. We don't know uh, the real incident or the, the, uh, the real score. But maybe his sons-in-law were really laughing. <laughs> oh, father-in-law, I think you have a problem in your mind right now you need to have a check up maybe they've been saying that it's all sad laws of testimony Lot seems pathetic and whimpering in his prayer but in contrast to the bold intercession of Abraham to God His relationship. I don't know what happened to Lot. But the warning from the Lord has been revealed to him. Amen. Remember when those kings went to Sodom and Gomorrah and conquered and they became captive. That must be a Already a warning to him to, re to remove or to depart from that place. But what happened when Abraham together with his men uh, were able to defeat those kings. And they were able to return to uh, Sodom. What happened? Lot what went again and stayed there once again. That must be a warning. Hey, But he, what? he ignored it. Sometimes we have to understand that God is always giving us a warning when He can see that we are already uh, moving far away from Him. And God wants us to draw closer to Him. And He is always giving us the warning. And God is always doing that through His Word that we have to be reminded of it. Amen. Loss of testimony. That's why even for us preachers, it's so hard for us and even pastor. Pag meron kami mga nagawa na hindi na magustuhan, sasabihin na agad, preacher pa naman. Bakit bawal magalit? Bawal na. Hindi pwede. Amen. Amen. 
And this is our problem most of the time. It's so hard. 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 But praise the Lord because of His mercy and grace. We're able to continue to do His will. Loss of testimony. And lastly, Amen. In verse number 23 to 26. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into the war. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the habitant, uh, inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. It's a punishment from the Lord. But prior to that, let's take a look here. In verse 15 and 16. And when the morning arose, the angel, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. But what happened here? What happened? Verse 16, And while he what lingered, Another type of compromise is this, what they call lack of urgency. Lack of urgency. Amen. They've given a warning. Make haste. Advise quickly. But it seems a lot still overwhelmed with the treasures and the possessions that they had in Sodom as if he's walking slowly sayang sayang yung phone ko iPhone sayang yung TV ko yung flat flat screen sayang and this is our problem most of the time. Hey, we, kept, we kept on longing on the things which are in the world. Amen. And we are not sure. We are not wholeheartedly following the Lord because our hearts are still divided. But praise the Lord, His mercy was still there. And the angel, what? Took their hand and brought them out of the city. Amen. The grace of God is always there. Amen. And we don't need to abuse this. Tinayman ako. Konti na lang po. So sad. And one of the things that happened here as well, the angel of the Lord said, the angel said, don't look behind. Move forward, amen. But the wife of Lot, oh, her love for the world, what happened? When she looked back, it tur she turned into what? A pillar of salt. Indicating that if a person will not follow the Lord, it will lead to him or to his destruction. Amen. Following the Lord will always bring us into a right place. 
following the Lord will always lead us into the mere fact that we as his children will always enjoy those blessings that comes from him. But of course, because of our selfishness, everything has been stopped. It's all sad, amen? And then what happened here is that Lot, before we end, and his two daughters live inside the cave, thinking, I don't know what's on their mind, but thinking that other places, together with Sodom and Gomorrah, were also vanished. But again, if we're going to read the, uh, the verses here, they said in Zoar. Amen. They must uh, already observe that there were also people living there. But what happened? They made their father drunk, and the firstborn and the second uh, first uh, and the second daughter lay with their father, and they commit what they call incest. And that was condemned here in the Word of God. Notice here. The first daughter bare a child that became the, what, the father of the Moabites. And the second daughter bare a child that became the, what they call Ammonites. And these two nations became what we call the stumbling block of the, uh, to the people of Israel during those days. But hey, let's take a look at ourselves right now. Are we having compromise that we don't notice? Please be reminded of those three things. When compromise becomes a routine, you will lose your, uh, lose your influence your testimony, and you will have that lack of what they call urgency. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, please be faithful to our God. Because our God is always faithful to us. Shall we all stand? let us pray.